talking about coming back from a retreat after lots of worship and praise. Sometimes you come back without much of a voice left, and I pray that God will anoint my voice today and anoint my mind and my thoughts. As we turn in our Bibles this morning to the book of John, chapter 11. John chapter 11, I apologize for the lengthy reading, but it's all part of the message this morning. John 11, we're going to begin reading there at verse number 1. It says, Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, The sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And when he heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Take your attention down to verse number 17. It says, then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlong, furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. And Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, The Master is come and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came out unto him. And now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily, and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? And they said unto him, Lord, come and see. Moving down now to verse number 38. Jesus, therefore again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldst believe, thou shalt, shouldest see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I know that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound with a boat bound about with a napkin, Jesus saith unto, him, unto them, Loose him and let him go. Turn your attention back to both Martha and Mary. When Jesus came to them, Jesus, if you'd have been here, he wouldn't have died. Jesus let him die. For a purpose. Lord, we thank you for your presence in this house, God. 
We thank you for your hand upon our lives and for the many blessings that you give to us every single day, Lord. God, I ask that you would anoint my mind and my thoughts today. Anoint my lips, Lord, as I deliver this which you have given me. Let every ear hear your voice today and every spirit feel your presence. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody said amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. For many years, a winter time or a winter pastime for my parents and, and those of us as a family when I was younger was to assemble puzzles. Couldn't, a lot of times couldn't do a whole lot outside, so we would pull out a puzzle and it would be spread out on the table and you'd get a few minutes here and there and you'd sit down and you'd pick through and you'd, we would put puzzles together. It was something we enjoyed to do and my parents up until recently, now that they're getting older, my, my mom's having a harder time seeing and to be able to pick out the different colors and different things, they've kind of stopped doing, but up until just recently, they, they continued on with that tradition putting these puzzles together, and my parents usually chose pictures that would have a lot of contrast. Now, those of you that have done much puzzling, you find some of the puzzles, they, the colors are all kind of the same, and it makes it really difficult to, to pick out the pieces and identify them and figure out where they all go. So they would pick out things that were just really nice pictures but had a lot of contrast to them so that it was easier to put them together. We would sit for hours just picking out pieces for a certain part of the picture and assembling them. Another pastime that I enjoyed when I was much younger was model cars. I enjoyed picking out colors to paint the different parts of the, of the model. If you've ever seen them before, they come all, they're all molded in one color, so you, it looks kind of funny if you just assemble it the way it is, so it's all going to be painted and it's kind of a meticulous job painting all the little individual pieces breaking them off of the little the little racks that they come on and and then gluing them together i had to stop doing them as i got a little bit older because i developed an essential tremor and so it's a meticulous little job sometimes assembling them and i had a hard time with my shaking trying to put those little pieces in the right spots and get it the way i wanted so it was a pastime that i kind of dropped but i always Tried to put these together to make the car look like the real thing. To get in there and just to paint the fine little details in there so that when it was all done, it looked like a real car. You'd look at it and it, and it assembled together. It was what I had envisioned in my mind that I had wanted it to be. I'd like to speak to you for just a little while this morning on what I have titled, Some Assembly Required. When you get a puzzle, that's the whole point of a puzzle, was to put it together. Cut out a whole bunch of little pieces, all cut different shapes and sizes and everything else, and you have to assemble the puzzle to get to the picture at the end. When you get the scale model, it was a whole bunch of little plastic pieces all on these little racks, all molded together, and you have to paint them, and you have to cut them out, and you have to assemble them to make a finished product. There's assembly required. I wonder how many of you today here this morning are living Nobody. We're all dead today. <laughs> I hope you're not dead. I hope that we all here today are living. We're living lives, and, and I, I, I wonder, I'm going to ask you another question now, and I, I hope that you're willing to answer this one. How many of your lives are perfect? How many of, your, how many of you throughout your lifetime have never had any trials? Never had any issues in your life. Never had a problem enter into your life. How many of you here today, everything in your life has gone exactly the way you've always wanted it to go? So that was an easy one for you guys to answer. No hands raised because nobody in this world has a life like that. None of us go through life every day being perfect, every day going the way we want it to, every day being in the sunshine, standing on the mountaintop, rejoicing because everything is great and wonderful. We all have times in our lives where things go wrong. We have times in our lives when things happen and we don't understand. We have times in our lives when we've made bad choices and we have to suffer the consequences of those choices. We, we don't have perfect lives because we are not perfect people. You see, there's a scripture in the Bible that most people, especially when they are going through something in their life, they don't want to hear this scripture. 
The scripture is Romans 8 and 28. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Right now, I'm going through it. And you can't tell me that all things work for good. How is what I'm going through right now going to work for good? And people don't understand it. They don't recognize we can't see what, what it is that, how it's going to help us, how it's going to be for good when bad things happen in our lives. We've all been there. We've all been in that situation. And that's the last thing that we want to hear somebody say is that this can be meant for good. Because the Bible says that all things work together for good. All things. There's evil in the world. It can still in the end, work out for good in some form or another. The point is that just like the puzzles I referenced earlier or the scale models that I used to build, within your life, there is assembly required. Our lives are, are but a bunch of pieces being put together to make a picture at the end, to make a, a, what God is forming in the end. You're not done yet. God is still in the process of building you, forming you, making you what he wants you to be. Whatever's going on in your life or the things that have gone on in your life, it's important to realize that if you're living for God, he has a plan. He has a purpose. He has a direction that he is taking you in. See, in the book of Revelation, John penned the words that Jesus spoke to him. Revelation 1 and 8 says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. He is the beginning. He is the one that spoke the world into existence. By the words that he spoke, he made the world. By the words that he spoke, he made all the creatures on the world. He, he is the one that reached down and took the dust of the ground and formed man of the clay of the ground. He is the one that breathed that breath of life into our lungs in the beginning. And he is the one that we are waiting for to return at the end. The beginning and the end. And he sees all things along the way. You see, God is outside of what we recognize as space and time. He sees at any moment the beginning of your life right through to the end of your life. He knows everything that's going to happen along the way. And I am a believer that God will allow things to happen in our lives to help us, to help us to grow, to strengthen us, to show us the way, to take us down a certain path and a certain direction. We may not understand what it is that's going on in our lives, but we have to trust God has a plan. I've shared this before, but the fact of, of what God did in my life before I ever gave my life to him, I can look back now and I can see how God orchestrated events in my life that allowed me to be the person that I am today. When I was in my early 20s, I couldn't have stood behind a pulpit and preached to you. If I would have stood in a group of more than probably about five or six of you, I wouldn't have been able to say a word if I didn't know who you were, if I wasn't closely connected to you. I wouldn't have been able to do that because it was not in me to be able to do that. I was such an extreme introvert and so shy that there is no way. I, I can't remember in high school any of the the oral exams or oral presentations that I had to give. I remember having to give them, but I cannot remember ever standing in front of that class because I believed that to who I was at that time, it was so traumatizing to me that I blocked it out. I know that I did them, but I don't remember a single one of them. But over time, God did things in my life. God brought events into my life. God took me to a, a Dale Carnegie public speaking course. God 
introduced me into the theater so that I could get into acting and start doing things, which all built my confidence and all helped me to be able to one day be able to stand here and preach the word of God to those that would assemble together. At that time, I didn't know what God was doing. I didn't know how it was all going to fit together. I didn't know all the puzzle pieces that were being assembled. You see, in the God is the ending. Jesus will be the one to come riding on the clouds when the world is over, and those who are ready will get to go with him and spend an eternity with him. Our lives within this time period are but a vapor. It's minuscule to God, the time that we spend on this earth, but we have to believe that God knows everything about your life and orchestrates things within your life to get you to a certain point. Isaiah 44 and 24 says, Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretches forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. God formed you in the womb. And since that time has been assembling events in your life to make you into what he wants you to be. All that's good in your life, God has given to you. The bad in your life, God has allowed because it helps you to grow and helps you to change. And within your life, there is still assembly required. You see, we don't see our future and what it holds. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring in our lives. We see where we are right now, and we can look at our past. And God begins to assemble a puzzle. Sorry, I should have had this open. We have a puzzle. Beautiful picture. And we take a puzzle. And we're, if we're planning on assembling that puzzle, we dump out the pieces. That's not done yet. We don't have the luxury in our life of knowing what the picture is going to be at the end. So if you're going to assemble a puzzle, you want it to be like your life, you throw that away. Have you ever tried to put together a puzzle when you don't know what the end picture even looks like? You're going to have a hard time as you sort through the pieces, as you begin to pick little bits out. I look at a piece here and it's a rosy colored piece. That doesn't tell me anything about what the end product is going to be like. I don't have a clue what the end of the, the, the picture is going to be like when I just look at one piece at a time. And I, and from my days of assembling puzzles, we would, a lot of times we would dump out the box just like that on a table. We would sort through and we, we'd begin to pick out the pieces with all the straight edges. And we would pull all of those to the side and we would, we would begin to assemble little bits and pieces. And then you start to go through those pieces and figure out the colors and how they fit together. We would assemble the border all around the outside. And then maybe we would take a look at the box and we would say, oh, here's a, here's a nice identifying part of this picture and it's a nice building or something. And you'd start looking through all the pieces and you'd look for all those colors so you could start to assemble little bits and parts of this and be able to bring it together. And that's exactly what God does in our lives. This, is, this here, this piece right here is but one day in your life. This is where you're at right now. This is the day that you are living, the event that you are going through right now. This isn't the whole. This isn't the whole picture. And when you, that event comes along, you might take that event, you might look at it and go, well, how does this fit along in with my past? Does this match anything in my past? Can I add this to my past? Sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. Then we maybe put it to the side and we think, well, that's part of who I'm going to be in the future. God's doing something inside of me right now. God's trying to bring me to a place right now. Maybe there's something I've got to learn in what's going on right now. We learn from trials. We learn from tribulations. That's what develops patience in our lives. The trials that we go through do something to build us. It's when we become uncomfortable in our lives that we begin to grow. 
that we begin to change. If we, if we every day just stay within our comfort zone, every day we do things that we know, every day we don't try to challenge ourselves and we don't allow anything in our lives to challenge us, you're never going to grow. You're never going to change. You're never going to develop. You're never going to be what it is that God is trying to make you to be. You see, we, we put the, all the things together. When we, uh, when we assemble the border and we assemble maybe some parts and pieces within that puzzle, that's our past. I can look at the puzzle, the pieces that are assembled together, and I can say, okay, I'm beginning to see a picture here. I still don't know what the whole thing looks like. But I can see what's been done. That's why now I didn't understand when, when I went to the Dale Carnegie public speaking course. I didn't understand what that was going to do in my life. I got to the place where I thought, you know what, I need this. Because public speaking terrifies me. Speaking in front of more than a half a dozen people terrifies me. So yes, I need that. I need to, I need to grow. I need to change. I don't want to have that fear anymore. I don't want to be stuck in this rut anymore, be stuck in this place in my life anymore. And so I did it. I didn't know what it was doing. I didn't know where it was leading me. I didn't know where it was taking me along the road of my life. Then one day my, my roommate comes home and he says, you know, I was just walking down the street, coming out of a store, and uh, this lady walks up to me and says, hey, you know, I'm directing a play, and I, you look like you would be perfect for this play. Would you like to come on audition? He comes home and says, you know, I, I said, yes. I said, I'll go. and I've never done this before. He goes, I want you to come with me. I need you to be there, be some moral support for me to help me out when I go to, to do this. I've never done this before. I said, yeah, okay, I'll go along with you. So I show up at this audition for this play, and this director lady, she looks at me and says, oh, you're here to audition too. I said, oh, no, <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. No, thank you. That's not for me. She goes, well, I guess we'll see you in a couple of hours then. I said, what do you mean? He says, well, if you're going to stay here, you have to audition. I don't care what you do. You can go sit in your vehicle and wait. You can do whatever you want to do, but if you're in here, you're going to audition. Otherwise, you can, you can leave and come back and pick up your friend. I said, well, I don't want to leave. So I said, oh, okay, well, I don't know what this auditioning stuff's about, so okay, I'll audition. And I had an absolute blast doing it. And my roommate got the part in the play. I thought that was a lot of fun. So what did I do after that? I started looking through the newspaper as time went by. Oh, hey, they're holding other editions again. I had fun at the last edition. I'll go and give it a try. And so I went and I auditioned again. And I got a part in a play. And I had a great time doing it. I didn't know what that was doing for my future. I didn't know how that was helping me along the way on my path of life. But I get to the point where I'm at right now and I can look back and I can see the pieces that have been assembled together and I can look back and go, I see what God has been doing in my life. I see how he was developing me along the way. He made a border and how he put, started putting pieces together to start building this picture, which is who I am. I still don't know what the end is. There's still a lot of it that's not assembled. There's still a lot of it that are missing pieces that are, that are, are parts aren't there. I don't know what the end picture is going to be yet, but I can see what I, and I like what I see so far. And God is working it and putting it together. See, we don't have the luxury like we do with a puzzle of seeing the picture. But we don't know. We don't know how it fits together, but that's where we just have to trust God. God, I don't know what it is that I'm going through right now. I don't know why I have to endure this right now, God. I don't know why this was brought into my life. But God, I'm going to trust you. God, I'm going to put my faith in you that you know what you're doing. That you're going to give me the strength to make it through whatever it is that I'm going through right now. That you're going to help me so that I'm better on the other side that I'm stronger on the other side, that I'm more equipped when I come out the other side. You see, if you're just merely looking at one event in your life, how can one little blue piece
We just read, all things work together. How is that fitting in with the whole? Where does that go? A good event, bad event, whatever it is that's happening in your life, how is this going to fit in and make it all? We have to realize that they all just get put together. Piece after piece, they assemble together. Our lives are like this puzzle. God is making something beautiful in you. You see, he has the luxury of seeing the box top. He has the luxury of seeing the picture that he's forming in the end. And he's just going through. Well, right now, you need a little bit of this green over here. Yeah, well, you need some blue over here. And we're going to assemble this part over here. We're going we're to take and put this together over here. And he's going to start putting little chunks together in your life. And he's going to start assembling the pieces together. But each piece is simply that. Each event in your life is just that. It's just a piece of a larger picture, which is who you are. You see, the other thing that I used to do was scale models. And it's funny because I still have some around my house. This one here, I was surprised this morning when I went and found the box. I opened it up. It's still got everything there. In fact, this one here, I didn't even start assembling it. Pieces falling everywhere. It's still all in the rack. It's still all one color. It's still there waiting for somebody to come along and start putting those pieces together. Waiting for somebody to be able to take the time to start painting all the little details. Putting it together. An important part of putting a model together, hopefully we all know what cars look like. Having the box top, seeing the picture of what the finished product is, isn't going to help you a whole lot on this one. This here is what makes the difference. The guidebook, the instructions, the manual. We just ordered a change table for my daughter. And it showed up in this, this nice square box. Some assembly required. So I opened it up and I began to pull the pieces out of the box and lay them out. And each of the pieces are all labeled with little letters on them. And then it found this little hardware packet. And I thought, oh, that doesn't look like a whole lot. And it was, didn't realize how tightly it was wrapped together. And I opened up this little packet and pulled out all these little bags of screws and, and nuts and all these little fasteners and all these different little things that are all numbered and identified. And I thought, holy cow, this is going to be a little bit of work to put this thing together. But the best part is, is it came with an instruction manual. And as I opened up the instruction manual, it says take this piece and take these fasteners and put these together and put these little dowels in the end and all of these little places. And you had to follow the instructions through so that when you got to the place where it says now take this big piece and put it together with this big piece, that when it's all said and done, you've got something that's assembled and resembles what it's supposed to be in the end. You see, God has that for us. And that's called a Bible. This is our manual, the way we're supposed to live our lives. When we go through things and we have go through those trials, we go through those things and events in our lives that we don't understand, that's where we're supposed to run is to this and say, God, what are you trying to teach me in what's going on in my life? Can you show me, God, what, how is this going to build me? And when I go through that tribulation and, and we go through that trial, we can look and see that, oh, he's trying to build patience in my life. He's trying to help me to strengthen me in different ways because he's working on an end project. He's working on that picture. He's working on that model. He's working on that, that piece of furniture that needs to be assembled together, but he knows what the end is. And he tells us how to get there. See, when we try to work things out on our own, when we go through a trial, we go through a struggle, we, even sometimes when good things happen in our lives and we desire to take the credit for it, it's like taking this instruction manual just like we did with the box top and throwing it away and saying, okay, now I'm going to try to assemble this. 
And I guarantee as you begin to pull all those little pieces off of the racks and everything else, as you start to assemble things, you're going to finish up and you're going to have a whole bunch of little pieces left over. And you're going to be going, well, it's all glued together now. I can't get in to put those pieces in. And it's not going to be assembled right. There's going to be something wrong with it at the end. That's why it's so important for us to put our trust and our faith in God. Knowing that even the good things in our lives, it's God that brought those into our lives. It's not us. We, don't, we shouldn't be taking the credit for those. We need to give God thanks for the good that is in our lives, saying, thank you, Jesus, for what you have done in my life, for what you have brought me through, for where you have helped me and where you have strengthened me, and give him all the praise and all the glory and all of the honor. And then when we get into that trial, we turn and we say, God, I need your help in this. I need your strength in this. I need your direction in this. And I'm putting it into your hands, God, and I'm putting all of my faith in you to get me through to the other side. And then that way, when it's all done, there's no missing pieces. There's nothing gone wrong. It's all been put together by the master, the one who made the human, made who we are, and sees the picture at the end, and he's going to put it together right. We can't do it on our own. Remember our opening scripture? Mary and Martha sent for Jesus. Our brother is sick. Jesus can heal him. I believe that. I believe that if Jesus would have just gone, as soon as he heard, Lazarus is sick, I'm on my way. I'm going to come. I believe that Jesus would have got there. Jesus could have healed his body. He would never would have died. But Jesus saw the whole picture. He saw everything. He saw the lack of faith, maybe, in the people that were, not, that were around there at that time. So it was for a purpose that Jesus tarried where he was. I'm just going to wait here a couple of days. Lazarus is now dead. I can imagine the, the disciples that were with him. Why did you wait, Jesus? They called you in time. You could have been there. You could have gotten there in time to heal him. But Jesus, we read in, I'm sorry, Sister Marie, I don't have this on my notes there. In verse number 42 of John 11 says, And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. He did it for a purpose. He allowed Lazarus to die. Mary and Martha both came to him. They both loved Jesus. They both had faith in Jesus. They both trusted that Jesus could have healed him. If you had been here, he wouldn't have died. But they don't see the whole picture. Jesus saw the whole picture. Jesus allowed it for a purpose. John 11 and 40 said, Jesus saith unto her, said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldst believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. He had a purpose in what he was doing. We get to that place where we are Mary and Martha. Why did this happen? Where were you, God? Did you leave me? Do you forsake me? Do you not hear my prayers? And God says, I hear your prayers. I am with you always. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. But I see the whole picture. You don't. You see this one event. And you're trying to build your faith on one event. You're trying to build your faith on one little piece of the puzzle. And you can't because you've got to know the picture. You have to take a look at the piece of the puzzle, the parts of the puzzle that have been put together. Those that you can already see and say God was in it then. And God's going to be in it now. God orchestrated all of this before. He's going to orchestrate all the things that are to come. 
We look at our world, where the state of our world, where we're at right now, and the things that are going on and on the brink of World War III and all of these different things that can happen, and it can be easy to listen to the media and become fearful. Or we can say, I'm just going to put my trust in God. I'm going to believe in Him. I'm going to trust in Him. We've all been to the grocery stores. We already see the prices of our food, where it's going, and the things that are happening. Read your Bible. It says that that is going to happen. It says that we're going to get to a place where we're probably not even going to be able to afford food. What are we going to do then? Are we just going to sit back and die because I can't afford to eat? What did God do when he took the Israelites out of Egypt? Led them out. Oh, Moses, it was better back there. Remember the food we had back there? You were under bondage back there. Well, it was better because we could eat. God rained down manna from heaven. That's what we're going to have to do. I don't know what God is going to do for us. I don't know how God's going to take care of us. But I believe that God sees that picture. He sees it all in the end, from the beginning to the end. And he has a plan for every one of our lives. So whatever's going to come, whatever happens in the world around us, we got to put our faith in him and say, God, I'm going to just trust you. I'm just going to believe in you, God, because you have the whole picture. That my, my life is still being assembled. Our lives here today are still being assembled. or are still being put together. And you are putting the pieces in place because you're going to take us to that place where it's finished. We have to know that God is in control of our lives. He is the one who created you, and he is the one that loves you. Don't get fixated on one event that's happening in your life. And base your faith on that one event. And allow doubt to creep in because of one event. Trust that he is in control. As Sister Wilson comes this morning, you're not finished yet. I'm not finished yet. We're still here. God's still pulling pieces out to your puzzle. I'm going to put this one aside here right now, and I'm going to, I'm going to set this one in motion. And, and these are what's going to happen in, in your life moving forward. And he's going to start orchestrating events, and he's going to start putting those pieces in place. And they're going to, you're going to come along, and, and that piece one is each day you're going to take a piece of that puzzle, and it's going to be assembled into your life. And each day you're going to have something come along. And some days it's going to be good. Some days it's not going to be good. But we have to keep trusting and believing that he's the one that's assembling those pieces together in the order that he wants them to go together because he sees the whole picture. There is a saying that says, this too shall pass. Are things going wrong in your life? This too shall pass. Has somebody hurt you? This too shall pass. Are you in a period of peace and prosperity in your life? Again, this too shall pass. We are not going to live every day on a mountaintop. We're not going to live every day in victory. We're not going to live every day in peace and joy. Because those things shall pass. But we just have to trust in God. That when we come down off that mountaintop and we're dragged into the valley, that this too shall pass. And God is going to give us the pieces to put together to climb our way out of that hole, to climb our way back up that mountain, so that one day we're going to be back on that mountaintop again and back on rejoicing again and back in victory again. We will never see our finished picture. Not unless when we're in heaven, God decides to reveal it to us and show it to us and say, this is what you came from. This is where you are now. But he's putting that picture together and we need to trust that it is a beautiful masterpiece because God is creating it. Why don't we stand together today Why don't we just take some time this morning to acknowledge the fact that God is in control. 
and that we need him to continue putting the pieces of our puzzle in the right places to make that final picture that only he can see and to believe that God is making a beautiful picture with your life. Lord, we thank you today, Jesus.